What is up? Um, a long time no see. It's been a couple weeks since I posted a video. I've actually, like again, I've recorded stuff. I just, the weekends have been busy, haven't actually put it together. So we're just gonna forget all that, start fresh. Today is Wednesday, September 13th. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an overview of what we've done so far this week and then try to keep up the last couple days to actually post a video. So, here we go. We did have school on Monday for Indigenous Peoples Day, and I also had my first observation um, by our new principal. So I'll get observed two times this year, and my first one was Monday morning. So what I did, instead of doing something from our reading series, was I had the students make this chart up here on Christopher Columbus, just because some states do still call it and celebrate Columbus Day. So I wanted to see what my students knew about Columbus before we started. Then we read a couple articles, watched a brain pop, learned about, you know, kind of what really happened. And then after, at the end of the lesson, I had my students decide whether they thought it should be called Columbus Day or if we should celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day instead. And then they had to give me reasons why to support their opinion. So I made this chart. We started with what they thought they knew. And we put all the sticky notes there um, for things that they thought they knew about him. Um, from there, we read a couple, like I said, read an article, watched a brain pop video, had some discussions, and we were able to move some of the things from misconceptions because they thought maybe he was a president, maybe he was an inventor, someone thought he was a prince. So those were things that we had misconceptions about. Um, these were things that we confirmed. They thought he was dead, that was true. Someone knew he traveled to an island. He lived a long time ago and they thought he was smart. And we did confirm, you know, he was smart because he was able to, he thought, knew the world was round. He was able to sail across the ocean and back to, um, and get, get himself back and do that multiple times. So he clearly was smart, a smart explorer. Then our new learnings, they learned he, that he stole gold, he took over land, he enslaved people, that he killed the native people who were living there, and they learned that he was an explorer. Um, two things, we had someone, what they thought they knew was either poor or wealthy. They did kind of say, well, he must have been rich if he stole gold, but we just left those over there for then. Um, so anyways, they, after having this discussion, a lot of them decided, you know, we shouldn't celebrate Columbus Day because um, we took, he was part of the reason why the Native Americans land was stolen and we should honor the traditions and the people whose land we took. So that was what we did that morning. And then on Monday for math, we started addition. So we'll work on addition this whole week and we'll start subtraction next week. We have to go up to four digit by four digit addition. So they've been actually been doing really, really well with it. Um, we'll move into and do some uh, word problems tomorrow just practice finding the information we need and really thinking about what it's asking us, what the questions are asking us. Um, and then yesterday was picture day, so our morning was chaotic just because, again, that adjusts your schedule and throws things off. So that kind of messed things up. Um, but we started our second narrative, and that was kind of tied into today. We um, started talking about dialogue, and this time having you know characters talking and having those conversations happening. So we are planning that right now. They're choosing a new thing they want to write about, a new true story in their life, and we will start drafting those tomorrow. They kind of did their beginning, middle, end, got their setting and characters all lined up today. And then today, it was raining all day. We had indoor recess, um, and after, we also earned the full class having lunch in here, so we did that today during um, lunch, and then we started a movie for indoor recess, so I had moved the world carpet here, and we brought all the tables up. And after that, they kind of wanted a different seating arrangement. They liked having them all pushed together, so I said, sure, we can do it for a while because I really don't care if they're excited about it, whatever. So I'll flip it around and show you our new arrangement. So this is when you walk in, this table is still the same because we didn't really come up with anywhere new to put that one and our kidney table is still the same. But these short ones, we did have those going like one, two, three, and they liked them going all connected. And then we have our Chromebook drawers and book boxes on each end. So now we can walk, have some walking space back here. And then the tall ones again that were just against here if they wanted them pushed together. So we have that. Everything else stayed the same. So um, we'll see how it goes. They were really excited this afternoon because we just moved it like this after recess. So it was only for like two hours that we've used it, but so far so good. The nugget is currently in the corner because they were leaving their snack wrappers on it and um, kind of making a mess of it. So they lost it at the end of last week and have been trying to earn it back. So they've been picking up a lot better. So I think I'll put it back out for them to use right now. And we've been wrapping up our space unit, so we've been talking about the moon phases this week. Started off just by showing like NASA on YouTube has like it just keeps going through the moon phases like of the actual moon. 
and I told them like when the right side, I taught them new moon and full moon, and then when the right side showing it's waxing, that's it getting bigger, then full moon happens when it's the left side showing that's waning, and I started the first day just by having them identify waxing or waning. <laughs> Literally, I played it and just kept yelling. I was like, waxing, 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 repeating it until we got to full moon, then I was doing waning, and then they started doing it too. Um, so started just by having them know whether it's waxing or waning. Then yesterday introduced crescent gibbous in the quarters, um, and they have been doing really good. I have just a slideshow of different phases, and I will put it up and ask them to identify what it is. And they've been doing awesome. I did also just hang these reminders so, like, they know. Remember, like, if the right side showing it's waxing, left side showing it's waning, and then. From there, they can go Crescent or Gibbous, but they've been actually doing really, really well with that. Lastly this week, our books are Patricia Polacco books. All of them are, so it's an author study. This ties really well into our um, personal narratives because these are all true stories about, um, you know, Patricia's childhood. So we read Some Birthday Today, and then I was able to pull pages to show them, like, the dialogue in there. That way they kind of understood how the characters are talking, and they... We used this book as an example of how to get your characters talking in their own personal narratives. So, yeah. All right, last thing I want to share for today is part of our morning routine I changed. I've started putting in a poem of the day, and I got this resource from um, Jen Jones on TPT. So she has them for the whole entire year. So I've been putting one every day into our morning meeting slides, and then my students, before we read it together, so if we're going to practice fluency by you know doing choral reading, all reading it together, but before we read it, we're finding all the stories in there. And I'm letting a new kid every day be up and be the teacher and they're calling on kids to underline stories they see. So this was the first day we did. So in scissors, they found the CI, they found the OR, they found AR, they found the O's, they found CH, they found the Mommy Ian home, Mommy Ian use, um, TH and with, again, we already had scissors. They had the sneaky Y and very, OR and important, and the Mommy Ian rule. So it was really good. They did an awesome job going through and finding them all. And then, so we've only done this two days because I didn't start Monday, I started it Tuesday, so we did today as well. Um, our one for today was eyes, and they went through and found all of them in eyes. So it's been a really good way for them to practice finding the stories and seeing them in words. So I've, it's, um, and it's really quick. And then again, also good fluency practice. So that's been awesome. All right, now that you're caught up for the week, I'll see you guys in the morning. Oh, not the morning, tomorrow afternoon. Okay, bye. All right, guys, happy Thursday. Not a whole lot to report here today. Um, I had my post-observation for my first post-observation meeting today, so that was exhilarating. And then, um, yeah, we had our counselor today. We were scheduled to have it at Friday afternoons, but like 2.40 on a Friday is just kids are out. We always have it off for um, different reasons like school off or short weekend so we switched it to Thursday morning so we had that this morning and then um, we, our counselor talked about like the zones of regulation we'll have that we'll have it every other week by the way um, zones of regulation with the kids and just kind of retouching on that language and then they'll get into some different like coping strategies and self-regulation strategies so that was really good for them and um, just good language to have school-wide using those zones of regulation but honestly not a whole lot else to really report we um, Still working on addition for math. We had library today. We had steam today. So it just kind of was a busy day. And we read another Patricia Placco book. So anyways, uh, did a lot with secret stories though. So that'll be a separate video. I'll try to figure out how to link that here, but I have those vlogs. So I'm not gonna talk about here and there in two places. So if you're interested in those, check out that. But um, we're gonna try to do some spooky art tomorrow. So I'll show you that if it turns out good. Otherwise, I'll see you Friday. All right, bye. All right, happy Friday. It was another rainy, kind of cold day here. We did get outside for recess, so that was good. Um, but just wasn't very warm or nice out. But eh, what can you do? It's fall. So today, we didn't do anything real exciting in the morning. Just stuck to our normal routine. Again, since we're reading those Patricia Polacco books, today our mini lesson, we just talked about things that we've realized that she always does and things that she sometimes does because we've read about five or six books by her now this year. So they actually thought of a lot of really great ideas and they came up with a lot of stuff connecting all those books together which was really cool. Um, we have a short week next week because it's our MEA break which is like the um, Minnesota Educators Conference type thing or whatever so we only have school Monday through Wednesday so we will finish up a couple of Patricia Polacco books next week as well for our interactive read alouds and then um, we started adding dialogue into our personal narratives this week and then this afternoon was probably like the 
the highlights. To review addition and place value, we played a little giant Jenga, glow in the dark giant Jenga, so I'll um, put some pictures here of that. But basically I just had a slides of um, addition and place value review games. I had them work with their tables, so um, they would answer the question, and then if they had agree on an answer as a table, I'd come around if they got it, their team got a point, and then every color of the giant Jenga pieces were also worth different values. So like orange was the highest at 10, so a lot of them were trying to get 10, but then it gets harder as you keep going. So if they got it right, they got to draw a Jenga block worth points, and they got a point for getting the question right. So we had a lot of fun with that. Again, it's kind of just a fun way to end the week. Did we do, if we would have just given them like a review packet, would they have done more problems? Yes, but was this a little bit more fun way to do it? Yes, so that's what we did. And then uh, we do something called Laker time to end the week and students who got all their work done get to go choose a room between like Just Dance and Movie. Normally outside but it was raining and then like board games. And then there's always one teacher who's kind of like the study hall room. So if they didn't get their work done, um, they have to finish it there. So just kind of a way to teach them to manage their time during the week, make sure they're getting the stuff they need to get done done and if not they have to finish it up there so that was our week in third grade though so another busy fun week i mean i don't know it feels like we've been in school a lot longer than we have which is a good thing i think it just kind of feels like we're getting into our groove and we have that short week next week which will be nice to kind of recoup during but anyways hope you have a great weekend whenever or whenever you're watching this and i'll see you next time